What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode. It's Top Media TV coming back at y'all once again. Make sure y'all don't forget to like and subscribe. So as y'all probably familiar with this story with this dude right here who was mentioned in Master Cody's book. And we're going to read and describe in Master Cody's own words the details how this dude was getting down. This is Fat Rat. A lot of people have seen this name come up in Master Cody's book for infamous situation, a notorious situation inside the prisons. And this is his picture right here. For a lot of people that haven't seen his picture, this is Fat Rap from the Five Dudes Hoovers. And Master Cody was pretty much describing a horror incident where he was taking somebody's booty inside the jail. And we're gonna read one of the pages of Master Cody's book, y'all. The situation was very gruesome and very notorious, as Master Cody described detail by detail the tactics Fat Rat had used. Also having information about Fat Rat reading some books regarding how to crush and break down your enemy totally into submission which was the case and he would also braid his hair and wash other people's drawers amongst other things but let's get right into it y'all right so we gonna begin from when bt gets put in a cell with fat rat master cody and this is when it begins bt backed up to the gate facing us in the cell his face said it all coward fat rat read it and moved in hey hold on fat rat cuz i ain't got no beef with you man he knew he was doomed and was begging. Fat Rat had a reputation for being a booty bandit and thrived on weak men with tight asses. Poor BT. Fuck that. Why you lie, huh? Pow! Fat Rat smacked BT hard across the side of the head. Aw, oh, cuz. I just ain't into crip on crip, cuz. Ah, uh, smack! Another whack came down. This one across his face. The tears grew quiet. A hog, BT began turning to hog for relief. Tell Rat to stall me out, cuz. I'm gonna stall you out, alright, replied Hog. And with that, Fat Rat grabbed BT's box of shorts by the elastic waistband and yanked them with one powerful tug. They tore right off of him. Surely I thought BT was going to mount an attack now. He had to. Bitches don't wear box of shorts, punk. Men do, Fat Rat shouted, throwing the rip shorts on the floor near the steel toilet. Aw, oh, Rat, you tripping, cuz, BT said but made no move that telegraph strength. It's Mr. Fat Rat to you now. What you wanna do, huh? You wanna get him up or what? Fat Rat eased into a strike first position. I ain't got no beef with you for Mr. Fat Rat. And that was it. His last vestiges of strength. He had yielded his manhood by calling Fat Rat Mr. A cardinal sin. In that instant, Fat Rat connected fist to face, knocking BT hard against the bars where Hog took the liberty of grabbing his cheeks. BT's knees buckled until Hog had fondled his cheeks he was going down. Ah! Oh, BT gave a start when Hog's hands touched his ass. Cuz, what you doing? Shut up, punk. You know you liked it, said Hog. Cat calls be began coming from the adjacent cells. BT looked around like a frightened, trapped lamb. But in contrast to a meek, feeble-bodied person, he stood six foot one and buff. Yet he had no inclination to defend himself from what was definitely a head up situation. Hog was out and in the tear and could not get in the cell. I was not going to get involved. I had no beef with East Coast or BT. Could I have prevented it? Yes, and I intended to. But it would be interesting to see how far this would go. I can't now equal. I can't qualify my thinking at the time. In my mind, it was kill or be killed, live and let die. Fat Rat had backed to the rear of the cell and began to disrobe. I thought then that BT would strike, but he didn't. He still seemed to think that Fat Rat could be de deterred by reasoning, by appealing to his intellectual morality. BT had been to the pen and had gotten tamed. He learned manipulation and vocabulary. But Fat Rat, like me, was uncut street, straight out the bush. The only language Fat Rat knew or respected or could be persuaded by was violence. Everything else was for the weak action and more action and anything else paled in comparison. Fat Rat stood wide-legged in tired shorts, belly hanging over them. He looked like an enraged Buddha. He was ready to fight or fuck. And knowing Fat Rat, he planned on a bit of both. Oh, Hog, you just gonna let your homie trip on me like that, huh? You letting him trip on you, dude. I ain't in that cell. My name is Hog, not Fat Rat. Hey Fat Rat, cuz, I don't wanna fight with you, man. BT's pleading was reduced to a whimper. Clashing hard with his appearance, he was evenly dark from head to toe. 
and standing there naked. He, like, he looked like a Zulu warrior. Dude, you gonna do something? Fat Rat said, massaging his groin and stepping up on BT. Cuz, you tripping, Fat Rat. Pow! Fat Rat punched him hard in the solar plexus. Mr. Fat Rat, punk. Fat Rat exploded as BT doubled over in agony. Ooh, alright, alright. Now what you gonna do? You ready to get him up or what? Fat Rat forced his way behind BT and made him move to the back of the cell. I don't wanna do this, Fat Rat, BT said. Even Fat Rat had to take a small step back as BT was much taller than Fat Rat. BT put his hand guard up and positioned his feet in a fighting stance then swiftly like greasing lightning, Fat Rat rushed into BT and began pounding him everywhere at once with furious blows. Fat Rat's hands were hampering blurs, reducing the for formerly upright BT to a pitiful clump of flesh under the steel sink. He continued to hammer away at BT's defenseless body as if he had been put up a ferocious struggle. I believe he continued out of the sheer fear of BT from when he had finally stood the battle. Fat Rat clearly wanted to make sure that BT never resisted again. When Fat Rat ceased hitting him, BT lay unconscious on the cold concrete floor. The entire side of Abel and Charlie Rowe was deathly quiet. Everybody was listening. Once he had torn enough, he dragged BT out into the middle of the cell so fat rat began tearing his sheets into shreds he then rolled him over onto his stomach and proceeded to tie his hands behind his back then his legs then he tied him, his limbs together only after he had secured securely bound bt did bt start to squirm against the tension of the sheets which held him in a hog tied position fat rat in all his brutish arrogance put one foot on bt's back like a big game hunter who had bagged a tiger and shouted from the depths of his lungs, Hoover! And it seemed to echo forever, bouncing off wall after wall. Hey, monster! Snake from 7 6 said to me, What's going on? Head up, I replied, which also implied there's nothing I could do. Big Hog had to lock it up, but before he left, he told Fat Rat to save him some, as in save him some ass. So before we continue, y'all, so Monster Code, he's saying how BT's a tall dude, 6 foot 1, and didn't want to fight back. He also described how he could have prevented the situation, but he was he went, he found it interesting to see how far this would go. So he decided to kick back. But let's continue, y'all. Fat Rat, enjoying his audience, wanted to make an impression as being a total brute. He looked over as if just noticing me in the cell. Master, what's up, cuz? What should I do with this punk? I don't know, Rat. Cuz is a coward ass dude, huh? Hell yeah, Fat Rat replied and looked down at BT with disgust. Let me up cuz, BT said trying to sound irritated. A bit late for that, Fat Rat responded by pissing on BT's back and head as he lay on the floor. I couldn't believe it. Ah oh, cuz, BT cried. You wrong for BAM! Fat Rat kicked BT hard in the side. Oof, Mr. Fat Rat. And don't even say cuz no more. You ain't no crip, Fat Rat. Who gonna clean this shit up man? Him, Fat Rat said. I knew Fat Rat wasn't going to untie him and expect him to clean it up. Surely BT would make an attempt on Fat Rat's life. Wouldn't anyone so treat him? You gonna untie cuz man? Fat Rat, you want one you want one now. Master, this dude's broke. He ain't wanting to see me. I should change my name to King Fat Rat. I rolled my eyes to the ceiling at Fat Rat's insanity. He then bent down and began to untie BT. I slid back on my bed so as not to be in the way of what I was sure was going to be. Some stomp down action. Once BT was loose, he stood up and went peacefully over to the sink. Before you clean yourself, you're gonna clean these walls, the toilet, and everything, Fat Rat said. Anybody need their drawers washed? Fat Rat hollered over the silent tears. Hell yeah, several voices replied. Send your line down here. What you looking at, punk? He said to BT, who flinched each time Fat Rat spoke. He was totally conquered. BT washed the graffiti packed walls, washed several pair of underclothes, braided Fat Rat's hair, massaged Fat Rat's back, and finally Fat Rat made him eat a bar of can county soap and drink some perm repair shampoo. Rat was ruthless. After BT had done all of this without so much of a flicker of resistance, Fat Rat body slammed him, tied him up again and slid him under the bed on his stomach. Fat Rat had done all of this without an inkling of shame or remorse. BT was his de facto servant slave. 
he followed through on every demand like a robot. This life had left his eyes and his swollen face showed no feeling. All of his movements seemed to be under the supreme control of Fat Rat's verbal remote control. Yeah, I guess I'll kick on back now. Now I've seen enough for today. I knew what Fat Rat was up to. He was ready to sodomize Fat BT and felt reluctant while I was awake. It made me feel like a conspirator. I hadn't said a word in protest to Fat Rat about his treatment of BT. And by not saying anything, I felt like I was condoning it. Silence gives consent. When I opened my eyes to protest, Fat Rat had BT out from under the bed and was ready to rape him. No, Rat, I can't let you trip that hard. Don't do cuz like that. Oh, monster. This ain't got nothing to do with you, homie. Hey, look, he said, grabbing BT on the ass. He got enough ass for the both of us, monster. Stall cuz out, Fat Rat. You done already ruined him in the gang world. He can't go home. Now you want to take his manhood too? Stall him out, Fat Rat. Damn, monster. Fat Rat looked genuinely disappointed. I guess he figured he had done all of this and rightly deserved a piece of ass. But I couldn't let that happen. Not while I was in that cell. Fat Rat slid BT back under the bed and went to sleep. The next morning he untied BT, broke his jaw with a right hook and put him out to cell. 20 minutes later, our names came blaring over the model's PA system. Cody Scott, Ray Davis, roll it up for the transfer. Damn, Fat Rat, now look what you done fool went and told. God damn, exclaimed Fat Rat. Now he looked awfully silly as his pride over what he had done shrunk to a peevish little glare. We rolled up our property and went to face the music. We got our customary wax from the pigs. So Monster saying the police, the guards had whooped on him. We got our customary wax from the pigs, a few stomach blows and a slap across the head which we could do nothing about as we were handcuffed. So let me know what y'all think, man. That was the infamous, notorious incident regarding Fat Rat taking booty from somebody in the cell, totally destroying his enemy in a submission. Master Cody did say Fat Rat told him in the cell that he had read a book on how to crush your opponent verbally, you know, and beat them into submission, which was the case right here very disgusting situation but um he did also say bt was six foot one and much taller and muscular too damn fat rat so i don't know how he couldn't defend himself but either way yo that was the situation the legendary incident where people had seen the name fat rat but i have not seen his picture but this is his picture right here for those who've never seen fat rat i couldn't put a face to the name let me know what y'all think, man, in the comment section. Once again, man, make sure y'all don't forget to like, subscribe. Top Media TV. I'm out, y'all. Peace.